Hi everyone, welcome to lesson 6.3. Here's your objective. I will be able to evaluate algebraic expressions. Well, what's an algebraic expression? They are equations that contain at least one variable and one operation. That might sound like gibberish to you, but let's check out what the words variable and operation mean. Okay, a variable, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, is a symbol, typically a letter, used to represent a number. For example, the letter um, Q could really mean 2. They rhyme, Q and 2. Good. All right. An operation, well, you know operations. There's lots of them, but the main ones we've been working on this year are adding. That's an operation sign. Subtract, multiply, and divide. Those are op types of operations. There are more. So if you look at this example I have down below, I have 14 plus N equals 16. I have to figure out what N equals. So my question to you is what does n equal? Well, to go from 14 to 16, I have to go up higher. So I have to add 14, 15, 16. Just two more. So n clearly equals 2. 14 plus 2 equals 16. So n equals 2. All right. I wanted to show you some variables that all mean the same thing with multiplication. When you multiply, there's about four ways to show it. I could have 5 times a with my multiplication symbol looking like an X, I have 5A. If there's no operation sign in between, it's an automatic multiplication. So 5 times A will equal 15. If I have parentheses with no operation sign, it's 5 times whatever is inside the parentheses, which is A. And this dot right here also stands for multiplication. So there's four ways to show a multiplication problem as of now. The X, just a number, um, next to a letter, a number, next in parentheses, and that dot sign. Well, what does A equal in this situation? 5 times something equals 15. So let's count by 5s. 5, 10, 15. So 5 times 3 equals 15. In this situation, A equals 15. All right, nothing too hard yet. Now, sometimes our book actually in this lesson makes it pretty easy for us. They give you what the letter's worth, and you just have to solve. Okay, so I have 16 plus B, and I have to evaluate it if B equals 25. So all I have to do is rewrite this as 16 plus 25, and you can use your skills to add in your head, or you can make it go vertical, make it 16 plus 25, because B equals 25, and you can add it. 6 plus 5 equals 11. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. The answer is 41. So 16 plus B equals 41 if B equals 25. All right, we have a couple more examples here. We're going to evaluate X minus Y. This time we got a little more complicated because X will equal 64 and Y equals 27. They gave us two variables. So it's basically 64 minus 27. All right, so we could do that problem out. Let's go ahead and do it. 4 minus 7 I can't do because I'd get a negative number. So I need to borrow from here. That's 60 becomes 50, and 4 becomes 14. I stole 10 away. 14 minus 7 is 7. 50 minus 20 is 30, or 5 minus 2 equals 3. My answer is 37. All right, down below, I have evaluate 6x if x equals 0.5, which is 1 half, or 5 tenths. So it's going to be, since there's no operation there, if you remembered, that means they're going to multiply. So I'm basically doing 6 times 0.5, all right? And 6 times a half is basically what's half of 6. You might not be able to see that. And 6 times a half equals 3, because half of 6 is 3. All right, this next example is above my pay grade, so I'm going to have a special guest star come and help me out with this because when we evaluate with um, exponents and fractions, I don't know if I can handle that. So let's welcome our guest star, Mrs. Murphy. Let's give her a round of applause. And there she is, lovely dance. Okay, Mrs. Murphy, go ahead and show us how to do this. All right, Mr. Murphy couldn't handle this one, so I am here to save the day. So for this one, we have four x squared. So first we just replace 4, we replace the x, we 
is 1 8. And then we need to square the 1 8. Rule tells us we have to square first. Because of PEMDAS, parentheses and then exponents. Got it. So 1 squared, 1 times 1, simple, is 1. 8 squared, 8 times 8, I got sick on the floor. 8 times 8 is 64. So we know that one. And then we know we have to multiply 4 times 1 64th, which I know Mr. Murphy did a fantastic job teaching you. That would equal 4 over 64. Now you have to reduce your fraction because 4 over 64 is not good to have. So they're both even, so we can just divide them both in half. They're both even again, so we can divide them in half again to get 1 16th. This is the way Mr. Murphy has to do well, it. Well, I would actually... We know that there's a common factor of 4 in this situation, so I would have done 4 divided by 4 equals 1, like she did, and 64 divided by 4 equals 16, because we could do that in our head in 6th grade, maybe and not 1st grade. And I was going to do that, but Mr. Murphy cut me off, like I'm sure he probably cuts a lot of you off all the time. So, 1 16th. There right, you have let's it. Let's give a round of applause. <laughs> all right, so we're just about done for this lesson. You guys have some work for me to do. Let's see what you guys have on deck here. You have to evaluate each expression. So you have z minus m, and you have 4m minus 2, and finally, finally 60r minus 4. Here's your key to do all of that. m will equal 4 in any situation. z, we only have 1z, and z equals 9. So that first one should be pretty easy for you. And the last one, we have our r equals 1 sixth. All right, so remember PEMDAS as you do this. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, all that good stuff. Division, addition, and subtraction. All right, so go ahead and do these three problems, and we will see you when we see you. Goodbye.